Hello everyone, this is a, another video about everyone's favorite topic, methylene blue. Uh, always so many questions on the methylene blue videos and uh, always happy to talk about it. It's a fascinating topic. Uh, just before jumping into the video, if you wouldn't mind taking a quick second to please like, share, subscribe, and or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks in advance for taking a second to do that. And as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So uh, the question today is, um, sorry for the late comment, um, but I'm just researching as thinking about trimethylene blue for neuropathic pain associated with spinal disc degeneration. Um, is it safe to take methylene blue with NAC and milk thistle? So uh, thank you for the question. Um, I will speak to methylene blue um, and it being combined with NAC and milk, NAC and milk thistle, um, but I do want to talk a little bit about the uh, methylene blue and just how it might be uh, useful or maybe not so useful for neuropathic pain um, associated with spinal uh, disc degeneration because uh, I think that's an interesting topic. Um, so, uh, but as far as methylene blue goes and NAC and milk thistle, again, not able to give medical advice here, but um, to my understanding, there aren't any uh, notable interactions between methylene blue and NAC or milk thistle. Um, when it comes to methylene blue, the things we want to be the most careful with are any medications or supplements for that matter that boost up serotonin. Um, and then we also just want to be careful with um, anything that might uh, potentially increase a person's blood pressure um, because uh, methylene blue can potentially increase blood pressure because it has some um, MAOI activity, which is a mechanism that some um, and, um, uh, some uh, blood pressure medications kind of implement as well. So we just have to be a bit um, careful as far as uh, that goes. So, um, or sorry, that's <laughs> So I'm saying there wasn't making sense. Sorry, there's a mechanism that some um, uh, antidepressant medications use, rather, not, not blood pressure medications. And those antidepressant medications can potentially increase a person's blood pressure. So be careful with those. Um, and uh, methylene blue has a mild MAOI effect as well, to my understanding. Um, so that is the story with methylene blue and milk thistle and NAC. Um, as far as uh, trying methylene blue for neuropathic pain, um, I mean, please, if you decide to try it, uh, please let us know in the comment section if you feel comfortable sharing that information, how it worked. Um, I really haven't heard of anyone using methylene blue to treat pain specifically, um, and I'm just not really sure how it might do that. Um, with that being said, there are plenty of off-label uses for lots of different things, whether they're pharmaceuticals or natural supplements or whatnot, so um, it could potentially be helpful. It just isn't something I've heard of folks using that for, um, but I'd be curious to know how that turns out. Um, I did want to just quickly speak to neuro neuropathic pain um, <clears throat> just because, well, first of all, there are, especially when it's associated with spinal disc degeneration uh, or spinal you know, um, uh, uh, degenerative disc disease, um, that's something that can respond really well to certain injection therapies. Um, in my experience, um, and I've treated many, many, many patients with disc degeneration, and uh, for a lot of those patients, either treatment with prolotherapy or platelet-rich plasma therapy, ideally combined with ozone therapy, um, has been the most, uh, those have been the most common therapies to help with um, uh, uh, neuropathic pain related to disc degeneration, in my experience. Um, there's another therapy called perineural injection therapy, um, which uh, if it's really more of a nerve-based issue and the nerves are really hypersensitized, that can be a uh, much better therapy for that condition than the PRP or Prolo, um, or sometimes we'll use a combination of them depending on what's going on. So there's some really great injection therapies. Um, but that being said, injection therapies don't help everyone. Um, sometimes there are reasons that we can't use injection therapies. So another therapy I just wanted to quickly mention because I posted a few other videos about this um, uh, was uh, videos on something called intravenous lidocaine. Um, so intravenous lidocaine has um, quite a few human clinical trials looking at its uh, effects on neuropathic pain. And uh, in my clinic, we've had a growing number of patients who have done really well with intravenous lidocaine. So um, again, for the most part, I'd usually be thinking direct injection therapies to help improve the um, sort of the health and stability of the spinal cord or, or uh, spinal column rather, uh, vertebral column and related structures. Sorry folks, it's been, been a long Wednesday. It's the end of my day. Um, so yeah, getting a little mush mouthed over here. Um, so uh, that, that would be uh, kind of my go-to, but for folks where it's maybe more diffuse pain, they can't have the orthopedic injections for some reason, or maybe just can't access them, um, the intravenous lidocaine has been something that's been really helpful. So um, again, if methylene blue helps with something like this, wonderful, I'd love to hear about it. If anyone listening says, hey, I've been using methylene blue to help with you know neuropathic pain or joint pain or some type of pain indication, I'd love to hear about it if you don't mind sharing that information, or if you've heard you know Dr. So-and-so or this or that clinician talking about it being used 
extra pain, I'd be curious to know about that too, is I really keep my ear to the ground about methylene blue. I use it a lot in clinical practice. Um, you know, whenever there's a, a, a reputable podcast or, or clinician, you know, talking about this topic um, or, you know, looking at social media posts or whatnot, I keep my ear to the ground, looking at the literature that's coming out on this topic as well. I think it's a really fascinating substance, but you just really haven't heard about it being used for chronic pain. So maybe I'm missing it, uh, missing that, um, but I just haven't, uh, haven't come across that. So uh, anyways, thank you again for the question. I hope this information was useful. If anybody has any questions on this topic or anything else, uh, please don't hesitate to post in the comment section below. Hello, and I'll do my best to answer as soon as I can.